Yes, Lapras does learn Thunderbolt. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to Gen 7 Random Battles. Uh, I lead off with a Ditto and he leads off with a Verizion, which is really, really interesting. He's got uh, Calm Minds, Focus Blast, Giga Drain, some interesting stuff. That's really nice about the Ditto that I'm able to see his moveset. Uh, I switch right into my Deancey and he switches right into his Amoongus, so apparently each of us is scared of the other one. Um, and he switches out from the Amoongus into the Octillery because apparently he still doesn't like the matchup, and I'm able to set up a light screen for free, which is really, really nice. Uh, I go ahead and throw some Stealth Rocks out on the field. His Scald is not doing very much damage, but it does get the burn on me. It's going to be an easy 3-hit KO from Octillery. Octillery, a Pokémon that we don't see very often at all, but... Um, Despite how forgettable it is, it does learn some awesome moves. It learns Hyper Beam from Level Up, which I don't i don't really know what else you could ask for. Um, anyways, my Moon Blast is able to drop his special attack, which means I'm going to get another uh, attack. Instead of being a 3-hit KO, it's going to be a 4-hit KO, even with the burn ticking away on Deancey, which is super, super nice. Um, and I am faster, so I'm going to be able to take this Octillery down. No problem thanks to that special attack drop, otherwise he would have come out on top for sure. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy the RNG every once in a while in Pokemon. Sometimes it, it really screws me, but other times, mm -hmm, it's my friend. So he comes out with a Ninjest now, that thing's gonna go for Protect, which is just fine, it's trying to get its speed boost up, I don't know if it's a Baton Passing variant. Uh, we will see, if it has Sword Stance or something, then it can't have Baton Pass, but regardless, uh, the Protect is able to let the burn damage tick on my Deancey, and down that thing goes. I've got my Steelix now, which has Roar. Uh, I think he's going to go for Substitute or something. Even if he goes for the, straight for the Baton Pass, we're going to be able to Roar out whatever he brings in. So that's extremely nice. And then uh, when the Ninjas comes back in, it's going to be at extremely low health, uh, thanks to those Stealth Rocks. So I, he brings in his Verizion, but I Roar it out into Kamo O which uh, gives my Steelix a Sky Uppercut. It's super effective, able to do pretty good damage. Um, I try and Toxic that thing, but it eats its Lumberry, which was its item. So now I know that it most likely has Outrage on it. Um, I don't really want to switch my Steelix out. I don't see him being too useful, especially since Stealth Rocks are already set up. I, he's a second Stealth Rocks user on my team, so um, I don't see anything he has with Defog so far. I go ahead and go for a second Toxic and basically just fodder out my Steelix to uh, the Kamo O's Sky Uppercuts series of Sky Uppercuts. Um, fortunately, the Toxic is ticking away. It's going to do a bunch of bunch of his life within the next couple turns. And uh, now I go into my Gengar, set up a substitute. This is a uh, sub-disable Gengar, which is really a dangerous thing. Uh, it also has Pain Split and Sludge Wave, which is really, really nice. Uh, so he's hitting his outrages, but that's just fine. It's not going to KO me as long as I keep the uh, substitute up, and that toxic damage is going to do some massive damage to him. Uh, he is confused now, so now the, the question is whether he switches out and gives me a free sub, or stays in and tries to outrage again. Looks like he's going to stay in. Unfortunately, he punches himself in the face. <laughs> I get my free sub anyways, and uh, this Gengar is at low enough health that I can now get some uh, pain splits going. He brings in a Toxapex, which is a pretty interesting choice. Um, really I would prefer this Gengar to be a Mega Evolving Gengar because that shit has insane special attack stats. This Gengar, mm, not so much. Um, but yeah, it's it's more of a, a trolley build, you know, that sub-disable. I could go for the Disable on his Scald there, but instead I go for a Shadow Ball, see what kind of damage that is going to do, see what damage his Scald is going to do against me, and uh, Shadow Ball is doing about 10, 10 or 11% more damage than his Scald, so uh, we're going to be able to weather those hits and take him down. Um, he also, we also get the Defense Drop, Special Defense Drop, which is really, really nice. He's going for Recover now, reveals that he has Recover. But that is not going to matter because of the special defense drops. So, with a critical hit, that Toxapex goes down to the mighty, mighty Gengar. Since Gen 1, Gengar has just been a, a monster. And uh, 
he only gets more so with each generation. It's super, super nice to see it. He brings out his Amoongus now. Um, its plant and poison type attacks will not do much damage against the uh, poison and ghost that is Gengar. Uh, instead, he goes for Stun Spore, which is not going to work because I've already set up my substitute. Uh, and I'm going to go for Pain Split, which is a really, really good move. Going to heal me up almost to full and take this Amoongus down to uh, about half health. So he goes for Sludge Bomb. It's not able to break my sub because it's uh, four times resisted. Poison is weak against Poison. It's also weak against Ghost, so it's going to do basically nothing. Uh, it doesn't even break my substitute on the second hit. So my substitute is now paper thin, but it doesn't matter because I'm able to shadow ball this thing and uh, it's it's getting down to KO range. I was hoping that that would be uh, the one. Unfortunately, he does have uh, some recovery, but it's not going to matter. Not in the end. We've both got our black sludge ticking away. I'm at 100% health. He's at no health. <laughs> And uh, now he's revealed his entire team. I have two secret Pokemon, and my Gengar is back to full health. He goes into the Verizion now, which uh, I'm hoping that it boosts, honestly. Because if it starts to boost, I can send in my Ditto and uh, flip its Focus Blast back around on it, which is going to be really, really nice. My Tyranitar, not showing up for some reason. <laughs> but it is a Tyranitar, let me assure you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and Mega Evolve it now as he sets up another substitute. That's not going to matter so much um, because my Tyranitar is packing the Ice Punch. Baboosh! So we're able to break that sub almost immediately. I think now he's going to start going for the Focus Blast and things like that. He doesn't have any recovery from leftovers so um, he decides to get his health back with Giga Drain which is a relatively good move. Um, Ice Punch not quite enough to take it out that time around and he is going to be able to uh, take my Tyranitar down with the Giga Drains, which, which is just fine. We did some really good damage to it. Um, he's at 20% health, which is enough for basically anybody to come in here and finish it off. So Verizion, always, always a threat, but um, my team always able to overcome. That's just how it go. So I send him the Ditto now, copy his uh, special defense boost and all, and I tried to KO with Giga Drain because I thought that would be funny. Unfortunately, he goes for the uh, Focus Blast. He is knocked out by his Life Orb damage, uh, fortunately. And then Ninjask is his last Pokemon, which is uh, going to be devastated by Stealth Rocks. And um, yeah, it doesn't stand much of a chance at all. It's just a Baton Passer, so I'm not too worried about that. Whale Lord is my last Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and KO this thing with an Ice Beam. He protects, trying to prolong the inevitable. But no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Speed boost isn't going to save you. Not in this case. Especially with nobody left to pass it to. So, good fight by Eagle's Human. Um, the Leech Life, yeah, has a huge damage boost in Gen 7. But again, not quite enough to, uh, to take out the Whale Lord. Ah, really good fight. Let's see how it goes in the next one. I love these random battles. Alright, we're back again. He's got his Oricorio out, which is, uh, I think this is the Fire and Flying type. This is another Pokemon that has quite a few different versions of itself, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, my Slurpuff has Fairy and, um, Fairy and Fire moves, <laughs> which is not going to be good against this Fire type. Neither of those moves hit super effectively against Fire. Um, I decided to go for the Moon Blast right off the bat. Uh once I got my, my Calm Mind up, but he switches into a Shedinja, which is going to take absolutely no damage from Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Flamethrower probably would have been the better choice in that case. Um, so I go for the Flamethrower now. It's able to hang on with its Focus Sash and set up a Sword Stance. I don't think that it saw uh, my Slurpuff being this offensive variant that it is. A lot of times you see Slurpuffs that have like a uh, Heal Bell and things like that. But this one is offensive, and once I get my Citrus Berry up, uh, Unburden will activate and double my speed. It's going to be very, very nice. So I'm not going to last that long with Toxic, but I will last just uh, one more turn, and it might be enough. Uh, he brings in Flygon now, which I think he expected to be faster. He didn't expect the Unburden uh, to activate, or forgot that it was activated. 
So I'm able to take that thing down with the Dazzling Gleam. Really, really nice. Able to KO one Pokemon with my first, and he's now revealed almost his entire team. Brooksish is that uh, water and psychic type, and he's able to hit me with an Aqua Jet. Not quite enough to KO, and he takes some massive damage from Dazzling Gleam. Uh, with his Life Orb, he's not going to be on the field for much longer either. So really, really good show by Slurpuff, even though he uh, had some damage done to him. Yeah, w even with the Toxic ticking away, he was able to eat through this this guy's team. So I bring out my Galvantula now. He decides to just go for the Aqua Jet. I was fearing uh, him bringing in Shedinja and then Bolt Switch wouldn't have worked. But fortunately, that's not what he does. Able to get the Bolt Switch going. I do have to finish my Switch before he picks his Pokemon. So I send in Feraligator to see what he has to counter my water types. Um, he sends in a Dugong which is relatively interesting. I think uh, Dugong usually has a defensive uh, variant, and yeah, that is shown by the Toxic that he puts up just now. Um, I've got a Dragon Dance now on my Feraligator, and I do go for Crunch. Uh, my other two moves are Aqua Jet and Waterfall, which wouldn't be that good against the Dugong, but Crunch would do pretty good damage if I was able to hit it. Unfortunately, he's he's playing that protection and against trying to just uh, wear my Feraligator down with the Toxic Poison. Which isn't a bad idea, all things considered. Now he goes for Parish Song, so uh, my Feraligator honestly probably wouldn't have lasted that long anyways, so Parish Song is kind of a, a wasted move, but it is definitely an interesting move. I reveal my fourth Pokemon now, which is the Alola Form Ninetales, uh, Fairy and Ice type. He goes for Protect one more time, which uh, doesn't really matter. He's got that Parish Song ticking away. He's got to switch out relatively soon, so I'm going to go ahead and set up some free screens with Aurora Veil from Ninetales, which is really, really nice. He's got um, Oricorio back out here now. Ninetales does fear that uh, fire typing, even though it is a uh, fairy and ice type, so it wouldn't take uh, super effective damage, it's just neutral damage. But I do want to save my Ninetales. I know uh, Feraligator can probably weather that a little bit better than Ninetales. Uh, he doesn't go for a fire move though, he goes for Toxic, which is kind of laughable because my Feraligator already has Toxic on it. So, um, he goes for Hurricane, misses completely, I go for Dragon Dance, forgetting that this thing's ability is Dancer. So every time you do a, a dancing move, it, it follows suit. So he gets a free Dragon Dance as well, really really interesting. Um, it's not going to matter so much because it is a special attacker, but he does have the speed boost now. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Aqua Jet and uh, do as much damage as I can before this thing takes me down with the Hurricane. The hurricane doesn't quite take me down, but the Toxic Damage definitely will. Um, overall, a pretty good showing by Feraligator. I'm a little bit worried about the Shedinja. I think that's one of the main reasons that I'm keeping my Ninetales alive and well, uh, because if that Shedinja gets gets uh, the Ninetales down, then I'm going to have basically nothing to take it out. Galvantula, Lapras do not have the moves, super effective moves, um, but basically if Ninetales comes out, that Shedinja is going to die from hail, which is uh, pretty funny. His last Pokemon is a Furret, which uh, I don't really fear. It's going to start going for the double edges, which, um, yeah, not, not too scary, even Choice Bandit. I go for the Heal Bell now uh, and cure my team, which I probably should have done earlier because both Slurpuff and Feraligator had the poison ticking away on them. Um, but, you know, hindsight's always 20-20. Uh, the Double Edge is not doing too much damage. It takes my Lapras down to 50% with two of them, uh, but with Leftovers Recovery I should be able to weather two more. So Ice Beam does about half of the damage to Furret, 44%, uh, so obviously he's pretty scared of that. Switches out to Dugong, who he knows will ha resist that Ice Beam. Look at that, critical hit only did 5% damage because of Dugong's water and ice typing. So we're only doing a quarter damage with our ice beam. Unfortunately, I don't think he suspected that I had the uh, Thunderbolt waiting in the wings, which yes, Lapras does learn Thunderbolt, which is super cool. Um, I'm not going to heal bell or anything like that. Why bother at this point? Uh, we basically got this one in the bag. Four Pokemon, three Pokemon, and his uh, Shedinja only has one HP. Well, it always had 1 HP, but we've also broken its Focus Sash. So I reveal my last Pokemon now, let him know that this game is over. Um, 
and yeah, Talonflame with Brave Bird and Gale Wings is just going to wreck the rest of his team for sure. I really, really like the team that I had for this. Uh, Galvantula for Alligator, Lapras, Talonflame, four of my favorite Pokemon. Really, they're all my favorite, but uh, yeah, those guys are definitely freaking awesome. And uh, with the uh, Choice Band and Brave Birds shooting off, yeah, he's not going to be able to weather any of this. Talonflame just coming in to do the cleanup. And then, um, oh, it's not Choice Bandit. He has a, a Z move. <laughs> well, there it is. I just use it for, fu for funsies, even though uh, a Brave Bird probably could have done the job just fine. Supersonic Sky Strike. It's like a 190 base power or something fucking ridiculous like that. <laughs> Anyways, a uh, couple of really good matches. I really love these random Pokemon battles. Maybe I'll do some uh, OU, RU, UU, maybe NU. I think NU could be really fun. Never use Pokemon. Those are the kinds that I really like to see. Is, uh, yeah, stuff that's not so conventional. A anybody can put, like, a, you know, a, a Ferrothorn and whatever Mega Alakazam on the team and be like, oh, I'm sweeping now. But it's much harder to uh, take some less conventional Pokemon and make them all work together. So I hope that you will join us for whatever comes next, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the content. That is always appreciated. Helps me get out there to the other uh, Poketubers that might be interested in what I'm doing over here. And I hope to see you in the next one, friends. So until then, bye-bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.